This is the BBC Home Service and the British Forces Broadcasting Service. Saturday Night Theatre. We present David March, Rona Anderson and Gudrun Yor in Shadow of Murder, adapted from her novel by Charity Blackstock. Shadow of Murder. My little daughter, how nice it would be to have someone to talk to, wasn't I, Kate? Yes. Oh, I assure you, I wouldn't dream of disturbing you. I expect there are empty cats. Here's a corner seat for you. I shall be getting off at Balahoonish. Ah, you'll be staying at the station hotel then. I oh, know, past Glencoe and the police assistance. Oh, damn. You'll have to dry your paper out before you can read it. So I see. Do you mind if I smoke? Of course not. Uh, perhaps uh, your daughter... Oh, would... no, no, thank oh, Kate you. never smokes, do you, darling? Such a dangerous habit. Besides, I think it's a wee bit unfeminine. So you're staying at the Three Sisters. That means we are practically neighbours. I'm Mrs. Stewart of Etty Farm, and this is my bad little daughter, Kate. She looks such a cross patch, but I think she's rather nice, though maybe I'm prejudiced. Oh, it's going to be marvellous having you so near. You must, of course, come to see us, Mr... Mr... Such a bleak place you've chosen for your holiday. But Mrs. Boggs is a nice little buddy, and I'm sure she'll do her best for you. There are only two other guests at the moment. You will be an artist, of course. Uh, no. If you insist on knowing, I'm a writer. Oh, but how thrilling, Kate, do you hear that? Yes, Mum. Oh, she's such a reader, you know. Are you writing about the massacre? Oh, Mummy, you should... Uh, no, I'm not writing anything. I have just divorced my wife, Mrs. Stewart. I've heard if it interests you one hell of a time. And the reason I've chosen so bleak a place is that I don't want to see anyone or talk to anyone. Oh, you poor man. In that case, Mr... Oh, I'm afraid I didn't quite catch your name. I didn't give it to you. Shawfield's the name. John Shawfield. Oh. Why, of course I remember now. You were married to Sylvia Court, the actress. It was in the papers, wasn't it? It was. Well, we'll just have to try and cheer you up, won't we, Katie? Well, you're being very quiet, darling. Oh, she never talks much, Mr. Shawfield, but I know she's as sorry for you as I am. Oh, Mummy, really? It's all right, Miss Stewart. I don't need anyone's pity. That's probably just as well, Mr. Shawfield. Now what? I understand exactly how you feel, you see. I was divorced, too. Oh, such terrible tricks life plays in one. And Sylvia Court's the loveliest girl. I adored her last film. No one could deny her she was a good actress. Now, we're not going to let you brood. The past is so isolated. But I'm sure the McDonald boy will be only too delighted to meet a fellow's crime. Uh, who's McDonald? Oh, he's at the hotel, too, the dearest boy. He's doing a book on the massacre, getting the local colour. He says he wants it to soak in. <laughs> that should be easy enough in this climate. <laughs> his ancestor was in it, you know. Alexander MacDonald of Achtriochen, who was carried to the hills by his nurse in that terrible night. Young Ian is his descendant. Oh, he's a fanatical Jacobite. Though, actually, he's lived all his life in the South. You said your name was Shawfield. I did. Oh, I should have recognized it, of course. Campbell of Shawfield. Oh, young MacDonald will have his knife into you, you know. I assure you, my name... The word Kruachan will naturally be familiar to you. Why on earth should it be? It's the Campbell battle cry. It's a word that has the bitterest significance in Glencoe. <laughs> I'm afraid I fail to see why this is amusing. Oh, Mummy, he can't help his name. Thank you, Kate. I'm quite capable of seeing that for myself. Well, I'm not blaming you, Mr. Shawfield. There are good Campbells as well as bad. Well, that's fair enough. Uh, who, by the way, is my other fellow guest? You did say there were two of them. Oh, Mr. Curtis. Such a dear wee man. Uh, is he a clansman, too? Oh, dear me, no. He's very English. A retired bank manager. I believe he's had a nervous breakdown and is here on doctor's orders. Oh, he's very quiet. Only goes out occasionally for a wee spin in his car. He's so devoted to Huey, it's quite touching. So devoted to Huey? Oh, yes. He even buys apples for him. Huey is a horse, Mr. Shawfield. Oh, a Jacobite horse, I presume. Oh, that's just silly. <laughs> no sillier than the rest of it. Oh, Huey's a darling. Mrs. Forbes adores him. We call him the Lord Provost of Glencoe. Well, now, we've told him everything, haven't we, Kate? 
I do hope you'll not be bored with us, Mr. Shawfield. I don't see how I could possibly be. Well, if you are, you must come and see us. But don't walk alone in the pass at night, will you? Not with that murderer around. Murderer? What murderer? Oh, Mummy, please don't. Oh, don't be so silly, darling. You're not a baby. Of course Mr. Shawfield must be told about it. Didn't you read about that dreadful man who killed his wife and buried her under the floorboard? Oh, now you come to mention it, I did. We shared headlines, as it were. But I'd no idea we were also sharing a holiday. It was really shocking. Of course, Kate is so sensitive, she takes after me, and I don't want to frighten her, but... He cut her up into little bits, Mr. Shawfield, and they seemed such a devoted couple. Nobody knew about it at first. He said she'd gone away to stay with her sister, and then he went away himself, but of course... Well, I mean, he put disinfectant down, but anyway, they dug her up in pieces. In tiny pieces, Mr. Shawfield. Can you imagine it? Yes, better than you might credit. The things people do. And the police think he's somewhere around here. The local people are convinced he's actually hiding an Ossian's cave on the cliffs of Hanuk Du. <laughs> Though how he could ever climb up there. We're all so scared we might suddenly meet him. He cut her up into little bits. His own wife. What gets into people, Mr. Shawfield, that they do such awful things? Uh, perhaps you can only take so much for so long. It might happen to any of us, Mrs. Stewart. It might so easily have happened to me. To you? But you're not a murderer. Oh, aren't we all? <laughs> but you've no need to be afraid of him. His state is far worse than yours could ever be. If you met him, he'd do the running away. I'm oh, sure... Oh, we're here. There's a halt here and we can get a lift the whole way home. Oh, if you just help me down with my baggage. Oh, yes, sir, of course. That's the it, thank you. Oh, goodbye, uh, Mr. Campbell. We'll be seeing each other very soon, and then you can tell me all about your book. Oh, Kate, hold this for goodness yes, sake. You know they don't stop here for more than a minute. Mummy, his name is not... Don't forget to call on us. Goodbye just now. Will you be Mr. Shawfield? That's correct. Uh, the car's here for you, sir, from the Three Sisters. I'll be taking you up the path. How far is the hotel now? Oh, it'll be half a mile. A, a mile, perhaps. Then stop, please. I'm going to walk it. Walk? It's a terrible night. Well, never mind. It suits my mood. But uh, you'd better take my case on for me. It'd be easier if I took you on as well. Mistress Forbes will think it's strange if I arrive without you. Look, surely there's no law against my walking if I want to. Do you think the murderer will get me? They say he's a little man and I'm six foot odd. Uh, I expect he's asleep now anyway. Tucked up cosily in Ossian's cave. Poor devil. I hope he's got a hot water bottle. I don't know what Mistress Forbes will say. After all, I was supposed to fetch you, and she'll not be too pleased to think I've left you in the middle of the pass. It seems daft to me. Are you sure you'll not change your mind, sir? No, I need to stretch my legs and breathe a little honest-to-God fresh air. Uh, tell Mrs. Forbes I won't be long. I'll be as hungry as a hunter and needing a nice stiff drink. Uh, I'll be on my way, then. What a night for a massacre. What the devil's that? Who's there? Are you by any chance a Campbell? Kruachan! Oh, why? It's... it's Huey! <laughs> oh, my boy, Huey. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've got nothing for you, old boy. Hey, leave my raincoat alone, will you, you fat clot? You're bulging it up without my buttons. <laughs> oh, off you go, friend. It's too damn cold to stay gossiping here. And I haven't got as much flesh on me as you have. Next time, Huey, I'll have an apple for you. Good night, old boy. I've no doubt we'll be seeing a lot of each other. Oh, hello, Mrs. Forbes. Oh, there you are. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. It's a brute of a night. Oh, that dinner smells good. Well, I've kept it hot for you, Mr. Shockley. Oh. oh, this is one of your fellow guests, Mr. Curtis. How'd you do? Pleased to meet you. And this is Mr. MacDonald. How do you do? Huh? Well, there are just the three of you. We are never full in the winter. Now, would you like a drink? Oh, very much indeed. Yeah. Large whiskey, please. Uh, perhaps you two gentlemen care to join me. Well, oh, that's most kind. I don't usually indulge just after a meal, but a small port would be very enjoyable. Good. And you, sir? I haven't got the money to drink. 
I understand you write books, too. How does she do it? Oh, thank you, Mrs. Forbes. I need that. Cheers. Yes, Mr. MacDonald, I, uh, I write books, too. I gather you're writing on the massacre. It's only fair to tell you my book has been commissioned and is due to come out soon. You have no need to worry. I'm no more interested in massacres than I am in murderers. I'm here for arrest. Not interested. But, of course, you would say that with your ancestry. <clears throat> Such a nice port. I do like a sweet port. Your very good health, Mr. Shawfield. Shawfield. As you say, Shawfield. Cheers, Mr. Curtis. You. Are you sure you won't drink, Mr. MacDonald? I do not drink with Campbell's. Oh, one should drink with everyone, even if one dirks them afterwards. Well, I gather my dinner's ready, and after that I'm going straight to bed. Ah. Should I perhaps say good night to the murderer? Why do you say that? Well, isn't the poor beggar supposed to be hiding out there? I don't envy him. I think I'd rather be in prison. Do we have to endure this gale? We'll all get our death of cold. There are worse deaths. And it's he who's cold. Fancy lying out there with the ghost of a disintegrated wife. Oh, do please shut that window. My chest oh, is not... I'm sorry, a... Mr. Curtis. I'm a selfish devil. There are no ghosts. Only the old mate Hewitt patrolling the old military roads. There. Well, I'll be off to my dinner now. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. Oh, I uh, see where to sit at the same table. I think Mrs. Forbes felt it was a bit silly to sit at different corners of the room, as there are just three of us. Uh, may I pass you the condiments? Oh, my God! Do you have to use that word? You'll be crooking your little finger next. I fear I do not have the advantages of your education, Mr. MacDonald. I'm sorry if my way of expressing myself displeases you. I'm afraid Mr. MacDonald's education doesn't extend to his manners. Pay no attention, Mr. Curtis, and uh, I should like the condiments very much. This angry young man simply showing off. I'm not staying here to be insulted. Well, well. So silly to sit at different corners of the room. Or is it? Oh, dear me. Dear me. I'm afraid we'll have to ask his parents to remove that boy. There'll be quite a lot of this. Well, he, he's an artist, of course. I believe all artists are a little nervous. No, forgive me, but that's just baloney. Why do you put up with it? I endeavor not to judge my fellow men. Only I do think animals are more agreeable than humans. Uh, by the way, Mr... Uh, uh, Shawfield. Of course. My memory. I was just going to say that you can always use my car when you need it. You... Need never hesitate to ask. Oh, how kind of you. I'll probably take advantage of that one day. Well, you're very welcome. I always say it would be a sad world if we didn't help each other. Yes, I suppose it would. I gather you're a great friend of Huey's. Oh, we're the greatest, greatest friends. Such a human animal. And I fear he's a little greedy. The local farmers have to lock their guests against him at night. Unfortunately, once Mrs. Stewart... She owns the Etty farm near Dalnes. I know. And a very sweet lady. She she locked her gates once. Only she made a mistake. She didn't lock Huey out. She locked him in. Oh. And he ate a whole sack of oats. Oh, good heavens. But it was serious, you see, because if he'd drunk water after that, he'd have burst. <laughs> oh, it wasn't funny, I assure you. Fortunately, the dear old chap couldn't find anything to drink. Oh. Well, well, why does Mrs. Forbes let him wander about like that? Oh, he likes his freedom... You know, Mr. Shawfield, I sometimes wonder if the soul of the MacDonald chieftain, McEarn, inhabits dear Huey's body. <laughs> There's certainly plenty of room. Well, when one watches him walking the pass night after night, one really gets the impression he's still brooding on the massacre. If one only knew the sorts in his wise old head. Oh, apples, biscuits, oats, I should imagine. Oh, no. No, no, you don't understand. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make fun of him. Oh, I... I, I think I'll take my little constitutional. I, I've not been very well, you know. I've not been well at all. Well, it's bitterly cold out. And I need fresh air. I, I don't like being cooped up. Oh. Oh, I wonder if this coffee is still hot. Oh, yes. Oh, was that Mr. Curtis going out? Yes. He's braver than I am. <laughs> I'm just going to sit by your lovely fire. <laughs> I see old Huey's just outside. 
I bet he'd come in here if you gave him half a chance. Oh, him. He'll stay there in the hopes of an apple. Mm. Mr. Custis always feeds him, so he's come to expect it. Well, Kate feeds him, too, when she's over. Kate Stewart, you know, from Edith's farm. Oh, but of course you met her mother on the train. I did, indeed. Oh, well, she's a bit of a talker, but the lassie's a nice wee thing. Though I do wish she wasn't so much under her mother's thumb. Uh, Mrs. Stewart was a great beauty in her day, you know, and poor Katie gets depressed because she thinks she's so plain. Oh, she's got magnificent red hair. Ah, uh, if she'd only do it properly. Uh, she's a capable lassie, anyway. It's a pity she's not in charge of the farm. I'm afraid they'll end by being evicted. Uh -huh. They never got the hay in at all last year, and three of their cattle starved to death. Uh. Mr. Curtis was very upset about it. Ah, but I mustn't stand here blithering. You'll be wanting to get on with your book. Oh, what is the subject, or shouldn't I ask? Oh, I uh, just uh, write novels. Oh, I do so like a good tale. I must read one of them. Oh, if you want something to read, there are some magazines and papers over there. And perhaps Mr. MacDonald would lend you something. He's a good boy, but very highly strung. Mm. He lets the massacre prey on his mind, as if it wasn't bad enough to have this terrible murderer so near us. Of course, I bolt the doors and windows every night. I think you'd better be careful you don't lock him in by mistake, <laughs> like Huey and the Oats. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Don't say things like that, Mr. Shawfield. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't really important, but has it struck you that one of us almost certainly has met the murderer? Hmm? What do you mean? Our friend outside, Huey. I Well, I must get on with my work. <laughs> Old hopeful, aren't you, Huey? Now, I've still nothing for you. What's the murderer like? Did he ever tell you why he murdered? <laughs> so that's your considerable dinner, is it? But I'll tell you something you don't know. I nearly killed my own wife once. Only somehow they didn't quite make it. But he did, Lionel Merritt. That's his name. Married to Violet Merritt. They seemed a happy couple. They even had a cat. No children. We had no children either. Sylvia. Wood. Oh, am I boring you, Huey? This isn't really the stuff for a nice, respectable horse. You go for your walk. I think I'll do the same. I'm glad I've caught you. I want to apologize. Apologize for what? To think that I tried to shut the poor creature up. What earth are you talking about? Tell me, how are you describing him? Who? The little man from Surbiton. <laughs> oh, I can just see it. And to think that I, a fellow writer, did my best to spoil it for you. What a good thing Mrs. Forbes told me you write novels. I don't know if I'm following all this, but I gather I'm supposed to be putting Mr. Curtis in a book. <laughs> Pass the condiments. Marvellous, marvellous. You seem to think my manners are worse than your own. Hmm? Do you imagine I pull the strings to make a person dance for me? How dare you? You better get back to your thieving Highland Reavers. Though God knows they'd probably chuck you into Loch Etty for the lousy little Southern that you are. I'm a Scotch! Oh, where were your cradles, Sandy? In the collies of the Charing Cross Road? Of course, with your name, you don't dare believe I'm descended from MacDonald of Artrioch. The only pity is you ever descended at all. Oh, I'm going out for a walk. And I warn you, if you make fun of Mr. Curtis again, I'll throw the condiments in your face. Hey, who's chucking away perfectly good apples? Why, it's Miss Stewart. Hello there. You're a long way from home, aren't you? Oh, hello, Mr. Shawfield. I was on my way to Tyndrum. Nice to see you again, Tibby Fowler. Well, the Tibby Fowler was rich. That's why the men came after her. We haven't got any money at all. We're going to be evicted. Oh, in that case, it seems a pity to waste good apples. Let me pick them up for you. <laughs> Mrs. Forbes promised me these. I biked up you with a message for her, then oh, I dropped my bag. I see. Well, I suppose I'd better be getting along. Oh, why? I should be glad to talk to a civilized person. Since I've been here, nobody mentions anything but murder and the devil. Oh, when I was a little girl, 
I had to read the Bible to my grandfather, and he'd never allow me to mention the devil. Huh. So I had to read out things like the world, the flesh, and the word I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> <laughs> I should imagine there are a great many words that you're not supposed to say. <laughs> well, I don't know why you should think that. Uh... Uh, why don't you sit down? Oh, is it too cold? Uh, we could go back to the hotel, if you'd rather, and have a drink. Oh, no, no. Why not? Well, Mummy wouldn't like it. Oh, I hadn't realised I was making an immoral proposition. Well, in Scotland, ladies don't go into public houses. Of course, it's different in your part of the world. Ladies there can go wherever they like. They... So you, too, read your papers. <laughs> well, I... I must be getting along. Mummy... I should never have come here. So you've read all about me, Miss Stewart. It must have greatly improved your knowledge of all the words you're not supposed to say. Why are you talking to me like this? Well, of course, I read the papers. And, of course, I recognized you. You were front-page news, and you were very good-looking. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to be impertinent. You see, well, I, I'd read all your books, and I liked them. And they're not the kind to go with all that sort of beastliness. Your last one was wonderful. Oh, wouldn't you like an autograph copy, as straight as it were from Gehenna? Oh, no, thank you. I get them from the library. You don't want to go squandering your royalties on me. Good heavens. And besides, you're so angry with me. I... Oh, I'm afraid I'm a clumsy person. I biked out specially to meet you. You know, before my mummy arrived. I dropped the apples on purpose. I expect you were finding this funny. You could put it into a book sometime. Would you, uh, like a cigarette, Kate? No. Well, why not? After all, Mummy can't smell it from here. Oh, come on. Let me light it for you. I'm sorry I jumped down your throat like that. Of course you've read the newspapers. And I'm an odd face and an odd name, too. It's, uh... Campbell name. So everybody makes a point of telling me. Oh, never mind. What about our contemporary murderer? What's the latest news? Oh, he shot you off the front pages, Mr. Shaw. You impertinent baggage. If you're going to be so cheeky, you better call me John. Or even, as my friends do, Johnny. I'm beginning to feel pushed into the elderly gentleman class. Of course. John. It comes easier after the first ten years. Uh, so our murderer has replaced me, has he? Oh, Mr. Shawfield. Yep. Uh, John, the poor creature. They're so certain he's here. Do you think he can really be hiding in these hills? God help him if he is. Oh, to be on the run like that. I don't know how he can endure it. The Pass of Glencoe is no place for a lonely, frightened man. Girl, I think you'd better come and have that drink with me. But what sort of a person can he be? A person like you and me, neither better nor worse, Kate. The human mind is... Like metal, you know. There's always a breaking point. Some of us murder, some of us mop and mow, some of us simply go to the devil. He chopped his wife up. That's just how it took him. You're being awfully nasty. Ah, uh, only because I'm afraid. Nothing makes people nastier. That's why I was so rude to you just now. Oh, well, let's walk back. We'll freeze if we don't. I'll wheel your bike for you. Oh, oh and you better give me your bag, too. I can't have you dropping it again. Oh, I can't. Oh, manage. don't be silly, I... I wanted to talk to you, too. Why don't you have lunch with me? Oh, there's nothing even John Knox could say against that. You'll be superbly chaperoned with Mr. Curtis passing the condiments on one side and Mr. MacDonald having a tantrum on the other. Oh, I can't. <laughs> How cold it is. I'm sure it's going to snow. Why can't you? Mummy expects me to be back at the farm. Well, can't you ring somebody? Oh, there's no telephone around here. Mrs. Forbes has been trying to get one for ages. But it's so difficult to lay down the wires or whatever it is one does. Oh, that must be awkward when it snows. Oh, if it snows, you probably won't get out at all. Oh, very jolly. What does one do about food? I hope we don't have to add an outbreak of cannibalism to everything else. You really have a horrid mind. Oh, don't worry. Mrs. Forbes talks up for emergencies. There'd be plenty to drink anyway. Well, that's all right, then. So you're definitely not lunching with me? No. You know, you're... How old are you? I'm, uh, 25. What, do you think your mother has the right to run your life for you? I'm not, after all... 
forgive my crudity, suggesting we go to bed together. All I want is for you to share with me the midday roast and two veg. Well, you're only asking me out of kindness. Oh. I hate people being kind to me. Oh, if you're going to talk like that, I've nothing more to say to you. Go back to Mummy, Kate, and tell her from me she's made a shocking mess of your upbringing. She was so lovely when she was young. Was she? I was engaged once. Congratulations. I brought him home. <laughs> there is an old song now, isn't there? Now I have to call him father. You mean to say she married him? Oh, no, no. But he fell in love with her. <laughs> and that was that. Oh, there are other kinds of murder, you know, Mr. Shawfield, and chopping people up. <laughs> oh, I simply can't call you John. I don't know why. Mummy will be calling you by your first name in five minutes. Oh, call me what you like. There's the hotel. You might remember, Kate, that Mummy isn't as young as she was. And that young men with Oedipus complexes don't make the best husbands. So I'll be meeting your mother again soon, will I? Yes. And she'll be turning on all her charm for me. Uh, before I go in, just tell me this. Has she read all my books? Oh, well, then, she borrowed them from the librarian last night. She was busy on them the whole evening. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I think there's hope for you yet, Kate. <laughs> I'm looking forward to meeting your mother again. And I don't mean that quite as you may imagine. Oh, there's Mrs. Stewart asking for you, Mr. Shawfield. Oh. I did say you were all at dinner, but... Uh... Oh, I'm disturbing you, and Mr. Kurt is just about to carve to you, isn't it a shame? Katie said you'd be eating, didn't you, Kate? And I just didn't listen. Now, you're just to go on eating, you poor hungry creatures, as if I wasn't here. I'll be away in a minute. I want a wee word with Mr. Shawfield. Oh, I'm sure we're all delighted to see you. We hadn't really started. Uh, do sit down. Oh, the uh, hell, there's the pepper. <laughs> Confound it. Hello, Kate. <laughs> Damn. You see, Mrs. Stewart, the effect you have on us all. <laughs> Hello, Kate. Hello, Mr. Shawfield. Oh, so we're back in square one, are we? I don't know what you mean. I just came to ask you to tea tomorrow afternoon, Mr. Shawfield. <laughs> And I'm not asking you, Ian. You've caught a cold, you poor boy. It's the pepper. Anyway, I'm not asking you because I know what you writers are. You'll be talking shop all the time and poor Katie and I'll not understand a word of it. As for you, Mr. Curtis, dear, I want you all to myself when you come. Oh, you've no idea how he helps us, Mr. Shawfield. He knows so much about animals. Oh, how kind of you. Actually, I once studied to be a vet, but I fear my knowledge is sadly rusty. Of course it isn't, you silly man. But now, Mr. Shawfield, so fascinating our meeting like this. I don't think these things are coincidences, do you? I think they're meant. After all, I've been a fan of yours for ages. Indeed. I must say, it's interesting to meet people who've really read one's books. Uh, most of them just flip over the pages so that they can say the right things. Uh, you must have noticed this, Kate. I? Oh, no, I can't say I have. Haven't you? Once or twice I nearly wrote to you, but I, I didn't quite have the nerve. That second book of yours, A Lion Among the Ladies, haunted me for a long time. Do you remember, Kate? Oh, but I'm afraid my little daughter prefers thrillers. Oh, come, Kate. Surely you remember. Uh, I didn't realize I was saying anything funny, Kate. Oh, of course not, Mummy. Oh, well, never mind. If you want to laugh at your poor old mother, why not? But now, Mr. Shawfield, you'll come tomorrow, won't you? I will indeed. I shall look forward to it. Well, then, that's settled. Oh, Mr. Curtis, you do go on with the carving. You all look so hungry. Well, if you're sure you don't mind. How clever of you to know how to carve. He's definitely here, you know. Oh, Mummy, please. The murderer. He's been seen in the glen, actually seen. Please don't let me disturb your meal, only I thought you'd like to know. I'm not hungry. They have a description of him, you know. Apparently, he's got a scar. A scar? Yes. Oh, it's so terrible. A creature like that is no better than a wild beast. Oh, he's mad, of course. No sane person could carve a... Cut up his wife. Well, I've disturbed you more than enough. Come on, Kate, darling. We must tidy up our little home before the famous Mr. Shawfield sees it, mustn't we? Would you think me very forward if I called you John? It would be a privilege. I hope, Kate, you will do the same. It sounds so much more friendly. Oh, I don't think she'd dare. Kate is very shy, aren't you, darling? Well, we must go. Bye just now. Uh, tomorrow at four, Johnny. 
Goodbye. Bye. Oh, Mr. Curtis, anything wrong? I, I'm sorry. I, I'm afraid I'm not feeling very well. Oh, can I do anything? No. No, I, I, I'll go upstairs and rest a little. Oh, that woman's a damn show-off. Is she? Oh, you wait till tomorrow. You'll get a magnificent tea and you'll see your books in the case at the far end. Uh, not near enough to be obtrusive, but uh, where you can't miss them. She did the same to me. Best of luck to her. Oh, you would say that. I'm going to tell you something. Every time you tell me something, you create an earthquake. What is it now? I've decided I'm going to marry her daughter. Oh, have you informed Kate of your decision? It's none of your business. I don't know why I'm telling you any of this. For all I know, you might be this murderer. I could say the same of you. You've got that kind of face. Is there a murderer's face? As it happens, my wife, my ex-wife, is very much alive. If you knew what you looked like when you said that, one day you'll do a murder yourself. <laughs> Perhaps I will. You better be careful, MacDonald. There are other victims than wives. <laughs> what was this you were saying about marrying the girl? Oh, Kate. I think it's time she settled down. I need someone to look after me. She'll never have a name in lights, but she's a good girl. I fancy she'd marry anyone to get away from that mother of hers. I don't think she'd be any better off with you. What the hell do you mean by that? I'd give her my name and a home. She'd have married status. That's all women ever want. She'd be very well off with me. After all, let's face it, she's pretty plain. We can't all look like Sylvia Court, can we? I, I, I warn you, if you hit me, I'll summon you. Oh, for pity's sake, I was merely going to light a cigarette. But I do find it a bit distasteful that you should speak like this of your prospective wife. After all, she's a person in her own right. I'll tell you something. I'll hold on to the tablecloth. We're all together, aren't we? Getting on each other's nerves like fun. And now it's going to snow. So your intended warned me. And when it does, anything might happen. Anything. How jolly. The murderer will have to come out for one thing. He'd freeze to death in Ossian's cave. And the Glen's a queer place, you know. Ghosts aren't the only kind of haunting. And you, being what you are... What the hell am I? <laughs> I'm going to show you something. Wait a minute. Oh, what now? Look. How do you like that, Mr. Shawfield? What's the point of all this drama? All right, it's a pistol. Am I to take this as a challenge to a duel or something? I see you handle it as to the manor born. It looks very old. Three hundred years old. A real Highland pistol. They call it over and under because one barrel is laid over the other. There's only one lock and hammer required because the second barrel can be turned round by hand. Here, yeah. after the first has been fired. It's a nice job. I, I should go easy with it if I were you. It's loaded, both barrels. Do you mean to tell me that you leave a loaded weapon lying around like that in a drawer which isn't even locked? This thing would go off at the slightest pressure. You, you must be out of your mind. It's mine. I do what I like with it. I'm not being dictated to by you. For all your right bestsellers. Oh, damn my bestsellers. Anyone would think they were a crime. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Curtis, uh, are you feeling better? What's that? Oh, it's all right. We've decided to use swords instead. This is something that has killed. Mm, it has indeed. Ask Mr. Shawfield. Oh, do please put it away. I can't bear to look at it. It's wicked. It's done murder. Put it away, you imbecile. Oh, all right. <laughs> Nowadays, they laugh at killing. I fear we've lost all sense of decency. We even sacrifice animals in the name of science. I don't like having a weapon lying about the house. It puts ideas into people's heads. It's all right, sir. Don't distress yourself. MacDonald isn't going to leave it here. I am? Why shouldn't I? I tell you what we're going to do, MacDonald. We're going to take a nice walk together. I think we both need some fresh air. I don't need any fresh air. Oh, yes, you do. Before it snows... We're going to leave you in peace, Mr. Curtis. You can take a nice little nap. What is all this? I don't want to walk with you. Well, you are walking with me. Serves you right for baiting that poor little creature. It's a pity you don't mind your own business. Okay, okay. Oh, God, it's cold. Can't you smell the snow? Ah, oh, that poor devil... This is no place for a murderer on the run. 
Tell me about the massacre, MacDonald. I'm in the mood. Wasn't it this kind of weather when it happened? Why, he has old McKeon himself to give local color. Hey, boy! Ah, it appears he's not feeling sociable. A revolting slob of an animal. He ought to be sent to the knacker's yard. Would you murder your own clansman? What about my history lesson? I'm beginning to believe you know nothing about the massacre at all. I know it by heart. So should you, Mr. Shawfield. I wonder you can face the ghosts, you murderer. There are other ghosts. There's Violet, for instance. Don't forget Violet. And you call me mad. Who the blazes is Violet? Is she somebody here? She is a little dispersed, but she's here all right. She's here. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. But I'll tell you of ghosts. The master of stare. You have heard of him. He ordered the massacre. I hope the soldiers will not trouble the government with prisoners. That's what he said. He wanted them killed. Women, children and all. A little dispersed. Her hands here, her feet there. I wonder if he sees her still on the slopes of Anach Dub. It was down these slopes that they fled, naked and screaming in a blizzard. The sky was red with their cottages going up in flames. They shot the old man from behind. They stripped his wife and tore the rings from her fingers with their teeth. It was bloody murder. This was bloody murder, too. When it was all over, the Campbells played a tune on the pipes from Loch Leven Shore. The Glen is mine. That's what the tune was called. The MacDonalds were dead. There was nothing left of them. There was nothing much left of Violet either. Poor Violet. It might so easily have been poor Sylvia. I nearly throttled her once. Only... Ah, well, I didn't. If I had, it would be me in Ossian's cave. Perhaps it might be even now. Well, now you know all about it. And now you know why I call you a murderer, Mr. Campbell of Shawfield. What do you say? What? Oh, my God, you look it. What an ass you are. I'm no murderer. I saw you handle that pistol. It belonged to your ancestor. He murdered mine, John MacDonald of Atrilchen. When did all this take place? 1692 in the month of February. Well, it's now 1965, the month of January. And I'm going to chuck that pistol away the moment I'm back. Oh, let's stop this nonsense. Tell me about this precious book of yours. When's it coming out? I think you ought to dedicate it to me. You and your best shirts. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I wish you'd never come. Are we all mad? My best sellers. You couldn't even leave me that, Sylvia, could you? Well, now, I hope you had a nice walk, Mr. Shawfield. Oh, are you looking for something in that drawer? There's nothing there. It's empty. Yes, it's empty. Oh, is anything wrong? You look quite strange. No, nothing's wrong. Well, uh, you must give me some idea of my route. Tomorrow I go to Etty Farm. What on earth are you doing here in the middle of the road? And what's all this furniture? Or do you have to move house in the snow? Oh, my dear girl, what has happened? We've been evicted. Oh. It's all Mummy's fault. Oh, what am I to do? What am I to do? I don't know what the hell this is all about, but I do know it's pretty well a blizzard and cold as charity. You can't stay here. You'll freeze to death. You're coming straight back to the hotel with me so that you can get those sopping clothes off. And I shall give you a large brandy, whether you like it or not. Oh. You can pretend it's medicinal. Come along at once. Yes, but these things, they'll be ruined. Oh. And then a piano. A piano in the parts of Glencoe. <laughs> Does it still play? Ah, oh, never mind. Clan Diarmid's dead and Clan Donald, too. Girl, are you coming or aren't you? Well, I can't just leave everything here. You can and you will. Mummy won't be dreadfully upset. Well, I'm dreadfully upset, too. <laughs> there was I dreaming of hot scones and a blazing fire. The next time you ask a poor London chap to tea, you might plan the weather better. <laughs> okay, come on, for pity's sake. You're the most idiotic, pig-headed girl I've ever met. I trouble you not to speak to me like that, Mr. Shawfield. Ah. Oh, really, <laughs> Mr. Shawfield. Mr. Shawfield, put me down this instant. I won't be casted around like a baby. In a moment, I'll sling you over my shoulders like a sack of potatoes. In fact, if you go on like this, Miss Stewart, I shall smack you, which will be very undignified, and create a certain amount of tension at our future meeting. There is not the least need to shout at me, Mr. Shawfield. I do not like it. I am quite prepared to go to the hotel. If you kindly put me down like 
This is a pleasure, Miss Jules. Oh. Do ask me again, won't you? You must both have tea with me sometime in Ossian's cave. <laughs> oh, that's better. <laughs> Here, I'll take that case. Now, for God's sake, walk as fast as you can. This is as bad as the night of the massacre. <laughs> oh, it was worse than this. Uh, anyway, the massacre is something I should prefer to forget. It's nothing to do with me. Only I must admit, MacDonald has quite a gift for evoking the past. His book should be really impressive. Oh, he doesn't really write at all, you know. What? Oh. Now, look, I'm not being familiar. I'm only holding you to warm you a little. Oh, I don't mind. My poor lamb, you're frozen. Oh, perhaps I, I should have slapped you after all as a remedial measure. Oh, well, I don't think that you should speak to me like that. I, I am 25, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. What were you saying about MacDonald? Oh, well, I thought you knew. He means to write the book, of course, but he'll never really get down to it. He's a failure, you know, like me. Like you? Oh, yes. He's always making a mess of things, even as a school teacher. That's what he is, you know. Oh, he's really quite nice under all the nonsense. He, he wants to marry me. <laughs> he thinks I'd look after him while he writes. And are you going to marry him? Mm, I don't think so. Oh, it would be such a responsibility. I'm not sure if you should let yourself be so devoured by passion, Kate. Why are you laughing at me? Have I said something funny? No, of course not. Well, I did consider it, of course. I, I've always been scared of not marrying. There's no earthly reason why you shouldn't get married. No, marriage isn't all it's cracked up to be. But if you're so frightened about it, you can always take up a cause. You'd do it very well, red hair flying and all. <laughs> In fact, I think you'd be quite terrifying. Oh, do you think so? And what cause would you suggest, Mr. Shawfield? Oh, I wouldn't dare commit myself. Oh, we're nearly home. Shall I pick you up and run for it? My legs are much longer than yours. No, thank you. I do hope you won't catch cold, Mr. Shawfield. You must take a good tot of whiskey when you go to bed and get Mrs. Forbes to give you a hot water bottle. You are the most extraordinary girl. You know, you haven't told me what all this is about yet. And where's your mother? Did she forget she'd asked me round? Well, you see, we knew they were going to evict us. They said we didn't manage the farm properly. Mummy's never taken it seriously, but when the final note came, she got frightened and went out, thinking that they couldn't do anything, that she wasn't there. Only, it didn't make any difference. They just took everything out and... Dumped it by the roadside. And what about your mother? Oh, I expect she's gone to Edinburgh. What the blazes do you mean? We have cousins there. I don't find that an adequate answer. Well, what was there for her to do? She doesn't get on very well with Mrs. Forbes, you know. She probably parked her bicycle somewhere and got a lift to Oban. Oh, I'll hear from her in a day or so. You tell me your mother leaves you to cope. And waltzes off to Edinburgh. I hope she sinks in a ten-foot drift and freezes stiff. She should be shot. Really, Mr. Shawfield? I am quite capable of coping with the situation. Oh, sure. When I saw you this afternoon, I was amazed by the way you had everything under control, down to the bottom C of the piano. Oh, sir. Uh, oh. Oh, that was such a lovely tea for you, too. Beautiful cake. I made it myself, uh, uh, Mr. Shawfield. Oh, oh, Mr. Shawfield, put me down. Put me, I, my foot. I'm not putting you down. I'm no, getting you back no. as soon as I can. No. Look, we're home. <laughs> Stop crying, my darling silly girl. Again, is watching you from the doorway. Huh? He looks like a new massacre. <laughs> You should speak more respectfully of the Glen. Shouldn't she, MacDonald? Shouldn't she, boy? Shouldn't she what? What's happened? Why are you carrying her? Is she hurt? Hurt? Oh, Kate! Never! Here, 
Take her. <laughs> no, I must be tossed the boat between the pair of you. What do you think I am, a tennis ball? <laughs> Don't put me down. <laughs> oh, do <laughs> Close the door, McDonald. By the way, what happened to your precious pistol? I don't know what you're talking about. The pistol, MacDonald. The pistol I shot you with 300 years ago. The pistol I may be shooting you with any moment now. Look, all I want to know is, did you take that pistol away yesterday? I don't see what business is it of yours. But I took it up to my room half an hour ago. What were you carrying Kate in your arms for? Oh, having just sacked the farm, I thought I might as well do things properly, so I ravished her as well. Will you let me pass, please? You may enjoy chatting in an icy hallway, but I want to go into the sitting room and warm up a bit. Oh, may I join you, Mr. Curtis? Mrs. Forbes says we won't be able to get out at all. Oh, you don't think the snow's as bad as that, do you? Gosh, I'm cold. Oh, bless Mrs. Forbes for this glorious fire. What? Oh, I don't know. It's really coming down with a vengeance now. But I must get out tomorrow. I simply can't stay in all day. It's bad for me. I've not been well, you know. The doctor said it was essential I should have fresh air. Oh, Lord knows it's fresh enough. My dear chap, I don't like being cooped up any more than you do. In any case, I want to get down to Balahulish tomorrow, see about Kate's belongings. She's been evicted into the snow, you know. And frankly, I don't think any of us will get out if it goes on like this. But I must... Mind you, I do understand how you feel. We're not exactly a coordinated group. If you feel you simply can't stand us, why don't you stay in your room? I'm sure Mrs. Forbes wouldn't mind. I know what the need for privacy is, God knows. Do you? Oh, yes. I had a wife once, you know. And wouldn't she leave you alone? Not for a minute. Not even to write. <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you all this. You stay in your room, Mr. Curtis. Walls are good 18th century workmanship. You won't hear us brawling downstairs. It might thaw tomorrow. It might. I must get out. You don't understand. I must. That, that pistol. Oh, now, don't worry about that. McDonald's taken it away. And high time, too. Well, I'm going to get myself a drink. I think I've earned it. Would you like something? Oh, no, thank you. It's very kind of you, but alcohol doesn't suit my constitution. Suits mine. Here, now. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Forbes. I needed that. Ah, oh, how's our Kate? Ah, oh, she's all right. She's had a hot bath and a good drop of brandy. I lent her my dressing gown and put her by my sitting room fire. Oh. Fancy Mrs. Stewart leaving the poor lassie in the snow and going to Edinburgh. Yeah. I could wring that woman's neck. Oh, things were different before Mr. Stewart left her. Oh, of course, her husband. Ah, he couldn't take it. He's married someone else now. The poor lassie's never been the same since. Not that Mrs. Stewart would care. She always used her as a kind of servant and keeps on telling her how plain she is. If she was lying dead in the snow this very minute, I'd not care. <laughs> Perhaps she is. No, you'll have a refill. Oh, Mrs. Forbes, you're making a lash out of me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, no. why not? It's one hell of a night. Um, Mr. Shawfield. Hmm? Mm, cheers. <laughs> I was thinking maybe you'd go up and have a word with Kate. I know she'd like to see you. She wants to thank you. Oh, there's nothing to thank me for. Of course I'll go. Oh. And you won't uh, mind the dressing gown? <laughs> I think I could survive it. <laughs> I was warned about your dressing gown, Kate. <laughs> you look rather sweet in it, actually. Well, just a bit on the large size. How are you feeling? I made a horrid scene, didn't I? Oh, poor Mr. Shawfield. <laughs> Have you had a drink? Uh, I have indeed. I believe I'm a little drunk. It'll do you good. Oh, Kate, I don't think you should look after everyone like this. Simply means that people take advantage of you. I take advantage of you myself. Yes. You ravish me, don't you? I, I heard I... you say that. Oh, Kate, I, I'm most sincerely sorry. I think MacDonald brings out the worst in me. Well, it doesn't make it any better. Please, try to forgive me. Oh, I don't really mind. I was a little surprised, that's all. Oh, what a nice girl you are. Thank God you're here. Looks as if we're going to be snowbound. It's just as well there'll be one civilized person among us. No, I'm not as civilized as all that. What do you mean? It doesn't matter. <laughs> You'd better go. Oh. You should have a good hot meal. Oh, there you go again. Only I wonder... 
I wonder if you would kiss me goodnight before you go. Yeah, of course. Well, I, I know I, I shouldn't ask you. Oh, I was going to do it in any case, whether you asked me or not. Oh, no, you weren't. It's nice of you to say so, though. But... Oh, I know I'm embarrassing you. Oh, for God's sake, come here. Come here, you idiotic girl. <laughs> sure, <laughs> Mr. Shorty. Kate. Silly, nice little Kate. Why don't you relax now? You're hurting relax. Me. Well, you asked for it, didn't you? Yes. Yes, I did, didn't I? Well, you better get down to your dinner now. And don't forget your aspirin. No. Good night, Mr. Shawfields. <laughs> well, well, you'll not be going far this morning, gentlemen. There are six foot drifts outside. <sighs> Huey's just sunk in one up to his ears, the dust creature. <laughs> well, I do hope it clears by tomorrow, because if it does. There's a little treat for you. Oh, and what's that, Mrs. Forbes? Oh, there's the cinema at Kinloch Leven. It comes round to all the villages once a fortnight. Oh, perhaps you could drive them down, Mr. Curtis. Oh, I fear I'm not one for the films. Oh. But, of course, my car is entirely at the disposal of anyone who wants to go. Ah, well, then, Mr. Shawfield and Mr. MacDonald can take Miss Stewart down. Oh, Kate, we were just talking about you. I was saying you must all go to the cinema tomorrow. Eh? Good morning. Well, yes, I should like that. No, I've no time for such things. I have my book to get on with. Besides, I don't want to be intruding. Oh? And what makes you say that, Ian? Yes, what makes you say that, Ian? It's a very interesting remark. We should all be delighted to hear your explanation. It's uh, uh, falling very heavily. It's really quite but, uh, blinding. one can only hope, can't one? Well, um... Just to clear away the breakfast things. I'll help you, Mrs. No, 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 dear. No, you just rest a while. Well, one can only hope, can't one? I wouldn't want to spoil your fun. It's a case of two's company, no doubt. I don't like playing gooseberry. Perhaps you would care to enlarge on these odd statements. Uh, I believe, I really believe it's not quite so heavy. I oh, think I know I, your uh, kind. If I've, I've read the newspapers, too. I know all about really you and your precious wife. And now you honour us with your walk. presence, that dashing Mr. Shawfield. And naturally you make a pass at any girl you see. Your sword will seduce your own grandmother, given half an opportunity. Right. Please, Mr. Shawfield. I'll deal with this. Now, what is the matter with you, Ian? Mr. Shawfield's never made a pass at me. Uh, he was going to hit me. Well, I'm not surprised. I think you ought to apologise. You better hold your hand out, MacDonald. Or should I call you Ian? You are being silly too, Mr. Shawfield. Really, I've no patience with either of you. Oh, I can see when I'm not wanted. Oh, looks as if you and I will be going to the cinema alone. Well, that'll be very nice. I keep thinking of the murderer. So do I. It's as if he's forcing his thoughts on us, making us all think of dreadful things. Yes, yes. We're all ordinary people, aren't we? Ian's really quite sensible when you get him on his own. And, well, Mr. Curtis is just a nice, respectable little man who probably goes to work every day in a bowler hat with a rolled umbrella. Well, that should certainly lighten up the city. Ah, you laughing at me again. You should be glad. It means you're exercising my demons for me. But of course, you're perfectly right, as you always are. It is frightening, my darling. And we are all behaving like lunatics. Oh, where are you going? Are you leaving me? Don't go. Oh, I must go and help Mrs. Forbes with the dinner. Well, now I'm afraid it's just you and Mr. MacDonald today. Kate is eating with me, and poor Mr. Curtis is having his meal upstairs. He doesn't look at all well. Oh, I hope he's not sickening for something. Uh, it's very worrying. However, I must leave you two gentlemen to your meal. I'll thank you to lay off that girl. Did you hear what I said? I did. Look, I've known Kate for some time. She's a good girl. I'm going to marry her. So you've already notified and me. And you come along. Of course, you've all the tricks of the trade. You turn on the charm, no oh, doubt. Oh, don't you think this is all a little unnecessary? What is the matter with you, man? You always assume that I'm hell-bent on seducing your Kate when I assure you nothing is further from my mind. 
she thinks she's in love with you. Nonsense. You're insulting her. She's not the kind to make flirty eyes at everything in trousers. If you want to marry her, that's okay with me. But do some courting instead of shrieking abuse at me. Talk some sense for once. Why don't you tell me about your book? What a filthy, abominable swine you are. You talk of courting. You weren't so successful in your own, were you? Wasn't I? I suppose it just doesn't matter to you. That little chap outside has more guts than you. He killed her. He chopped her up. But I don't suppose you even mind all that muck in the papers. It's just more material for your cheap jack nubbles. <laughs> suppose it is. Well, I'm going for a walk. I'll leave you to do your courting. I must admit that the thought of you as a wooer seems rather like Huey in tights doing a tap dance. But Kate is a very compassionate girl. Pretentious swine. Kate? Kate? Uh, come here a moment. I, I want to talk to you. I thought you were up in your room, Mr. Curtis. I really don't think you ought to be out in this weather. I know it stopped snowing, but it's bitterly cold. Yes, I'm well wrapped up. Are you looking for something, sir? Why should I be? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were ferreting around with your stick. <laughs> but of course, it's a damn silly question. You couldn't find a house in all this snow. I'm just taking a little constitutional. Hardly the weather for it. I wonder if they've caught the murderer yet. Well, of course not. Of course? With half the shire looking for him? Actually... I've developed a theory about him. And what is that? I don't think he's shut out at all. I think he's shut in. And the best of luck to him, poor devil. Oh, was that Huey over there? No. You looked over your shoulder. I saw him wandering about a few minutes ago. I wish you wouldn't keep on asking me questions. I beg your pardon. I didn't mean to... Uh... Well, it's really very irritating. It worries me. I don't like silly questions. I do hope it's a nice, jolly film tomorrow. I'm sure Miss Stewart will enjoy it. She's such a charming lady, I always think. Yes, she is, isn't she? She's kind. It's a quality one doesn't often meet in the modern generation. I've often watched her with Huey. I always feel the way people behave with animals is very revealing. I can't abide cruelty to animals. Shouldn't you come in now, sir? I'm sure Mrs. Forbes has a good fire waiting for oh, us. Do stop bothering me. I like the fresh air, I tell you. All right, all right. I don't. Not when it's as fresh as this. I'm going back to the lounge. Ian, do stop pawing me about like this. I don't want to kiss you. I've already said a dozen times that I'm not going to marry you. Thank you very much. I suppose I... you want to remain an old oh, maid. I do wish you'd be sensible. Why don't you listen? You just go on from where you left off without paying the faintest attention to what I've been saying. I've said no, and I mean no, and... Oh. I'm so sorry. Am I intruding? <gasps> this is too much. You did this on purpose. You're spying on us. Oh, dear. I didn't mean to gate crash a crisis. I'm honestly sorry. I'm afraid I ruined his kiss. Huh. Do you think I'd let a great big Jesse like that kiss me? <clears throat> let me help you pick up those magazines. MacDonald seems to do his courting as he does everything else. Like a car with the steering gone. Why are you always so beastly about him? He said you'd been terribly rude to him. Ah, we all come to you for comfort, you see. I'm here for comfort myself. Comfort? <laughs> a shoulder to weep on, I know. No, oh, it always makes me laugh when I read those magazine stories about strong, silent heroes taking the little woman into their manly arms. <laughs> the poor creature ought to know that in a wee while she'll be reeling under the full sixteen stone of him, patting his shoulder and drying his tears. I don't know why you're complaining. Before you know where you are, Mr. Curtis will be asking you to partake of his couch and condiments. I don't find that in the least bit funny. Oh, I don't seem to be very popular this evening. Come and have a drink with me. Let's go to pieces. Well, Tippy, see you drink your whiskey like a good Scots girl. After all, Mr. Shawfield, I am precisely that. I want to talk to you. And I should like to listen. Shoulders a weep on. Though I don't weigh 16 stone. I want to kiss you. No. Why not? Just no. Tell me about it instead. 
I oh, suspect you're well used to people telling you things. Oh, I always give excellent... Did you uh, hear anything last night? What do you mean? Like... Like someone crying. Oh, I sleep very heavily. He's still in the papers, but they don't think he's hiding out now. They think he's in a hotel. Someone saw him at Balahulish. It's that scar, you know. It's on his wrist. They think it may be where the knife slipped. Uh, they never found the weapon, you know. London has a deep and wide river, Mrs. Forbes. Oh, well, it's nothing to do with us, is it? Oh, I hear Mr. Curtis is lending you his car. Mm. Oh, what a blessing it is, it's thawing. You'll need to start about six tonight. How pretty you look, Kate. You should always use lipstick. Mrs. Forbes lent it to me. I hope I've not put on too much. Mummy would be very cross with me. No comment. Let the old lady enjoy herself in Edinburgh. We're going to enjoy our cinema. Ah, you look really nice. I like the hairstyle, too. Thank you, Mr. Shawfield. Kate. <laughs> yes, Mr. Shawfield. <laughs> I thought as much. <laughs> this is deliberate impertinence. All right, my girl. Either you call me by my proper name or I turn this car around, go back to the hotel, carry you up to bed, oh. and go to the pictures on my own. Oh. Well, would you like to put it to the test? No, John. I should think so. What happened? I just want to celebrate this unprecedented occasion. Oh, John, please, please. Oh, and you're not being fair. Now, why must you spoil a nice evening? For pity's sake, I was only going to give you a nice, friendly kiss. Oh. Kate. Oh! Damn! Oh. oh, now, what is it? Oh, you've hurt yourself. Your wrist's bleeding. What the hell does he keep down the car seat? Looks like a razor blade. Oh, now, I I'll bind it for you. It's, it's not a deep cut. It'll, it'll stop bleeding in a moment. No, it, it's nothing. Uh, don't fuss me. I'm sorry I made such an ass of myself. Will you just try to forget it? Your guardian angel is obviously trained in commando tactics. Accept my apologies, please. Are you sure you feel all right? I'm fine. Why not? After all, I now share the same distinguishing mark as the murderer. Well, where do we go from here? I don't know the way to Kinlock, do you? Straight on. And then to the right. I didn't think we'd get back once. I think Sylvia, of course, Quite a coincidence, wasn't it? But it should have been one of Sylvia's films. Did you enjoy it, darling? It was very nice. Should we drive somewhere to get a drink? Uh, no, thank you. You sure? Yes, thank you. Oh, all right, then I'll drive you home. What did you think of my wife? Oh, she's very lovely. <laughs> it's all rather amusing, actually. Well, it is funny, don't you think so? Oh, for God's sake, I must say you're not the most enlivening of companions. You could have the radio on, but it'll wake you up a bit. What the hell do you think you're doing? Did Mummy never tell you not to grab at a driver's arm, especially on a slippery mountain road? You might have killed a pair of us. Johnny, Johnny. I know you hated her. I know she's hurt you dreadfully, but leave her be now. She doesn't matter. She can't touch you anymore. She'll get what she deserves in the end. She will indeed. Oh, please, Johnny, Johnny. Listen. Please, you must listen. It was wicked that it should be that, Phil. And I, I wish I'd known, but does it really matter so much to you? That part of your life is over and done with. You need never see her again. I have to see her again. No, 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 please. Let her go to the devil any way she pleases. Oh, I'm surprised at you, Kate. What would your grandfather say? Oh, are you going to ruin your life for her? You fool. Can't you see that is what she wants you to do? What do you mean by that, Kate? I should like an answer. We're not moving till I get one. All right. I'll answer. I think you're planning to kill her. You're going to tonight, Johnny. I know you are. All right. If you have to know, I am going tonight. 
I had a letter this morning from my solicitors. Oh, there's been no postman today. I put a call through this morning. There is no telephone. And you said it was a letter. Oh, you're driving me mad with all this insanity. <laughs> Serve you right if I put you out of the car and made you walk home. You are going to kill her. I know it. You win. I'm going to see her anyway. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to kill her. Oh, don't be frightened, Kate. There's no need. I'll try not to do anything silly. Oh, Georgie. Johnny, you're not to go. I have to. I'll go for you. I'll give her any message you want. Oh, my darling idiot. She'd eat you alive. Oh, I'm not afraid of her. I can sort her, all right? You don't know me, Johnny. You don't know me at all. I'm beginning to see that. But I have to go, Kate. I can't explain exactly why. Even to myself. It's as if there's something in this confounded glen that's pushing me on. It's your novels, Johnny. I know you're right again. I'll make you right again. Oh, Johnny, if it would help you, I'll, I'll do anything you want, Johnny. Anything. I love you. I'd give up the whole wide world to stop you going. I'm not as silly as I used to be. If you want me to... What? Oh, Kate. Oh, my dear, dear girl. Thank you, Kate. I'll, I'll never forget that. But I wouldn't want it to be like that for you. You deserve better. Uh, dear Kate, I'll be honest with you. I have to go to London. But what will happen when I get there, I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. Come, darling. We must go. Long after midnight, we'll have the elders of the Kirk talking. <laughs> what a good thing Hugh is here to chaperone you. He's away to the village. Goodbye, Kate. I'll leave Mr. Curtis's car out for the night. Snow's melting fast. It won't come to any harm. Oh, Johnny! Johnny! There must be an end to it. Even here in Glencoe. I could do far more for you than she could. She can only destroy. Here we come why won't you trust me? Oh, not that. I do trust you. And it's not that. Goodbye, Kate. I'll be waiting for you when you come back. Damnation, what's that? Oh, this is just about the last straw. What the hell are you doing out of this hour in the morning, MacDonald? And is this confounded bicycle yours left, presumably, to trip me up? I've been waiting for oh, you. Oh, go back to bed, you confounded idiot, and take your bike with you. Oh, no, you don't get away with it like that, you murderous Campbell. Look here, MacDonald. I've had just as much as I can take. Let me tell you once and for all that I am not a Campbell. I never was a Campbell. And I'm never, thank God, likely to be a Campbell. Of course. Seducing a nice girl like that means nothing to you. And what do you mean by that? The cinema ended at half past ten. It didn't take you two hours to drive back, did it? Oh, will you get out of my road? I've got to get to Balakulish. You neurotic little moonshiner, you're mad. You've got Campbells on the brain. You're not going to get away with this. I heard I'd go to her room and cry her heart out for what you'd done to her. She was still crying when I left. Oh, but you wouldn't care. You just take what you want on the hell with it. You're muddling up your times a bit, aren't you? I am not one of your wenching gallants of three centuries. What's that in your pocket? Put that away, you idiot. Do you want to commit a murder? It's a hair trigger. Oh, for God's sake, you are mad. Don't you like my pistol, Shawfield? Perhaps you prefer to be at the other end of it. Put that down! Oh. Get up, you damn fool. Well, you don't expect me to help you, do you? I must say... I never thought I, I'd owe my life to a bicycle. I'll take that pistol from you, thank you very much. 
<laughs> so both barrels have been fired. Oh, stop that stupid noise, you infernal <laughs> lunatic. Whose bicycle is this? Mrs. Stewart's. I might have guessed. So the murderer was locked in after all. Come on. Get up, you nutcase. You're going to help me. I want to shove away some of this snow. I can't. If you don't, I'll bury you in it, so help me. Oh, come on, man. Pull yourself together. Not to leave lethal weapons about. Come along, we better get back. We've made enough asses of ourselves to create a new massacre. You, you, you can't leave that poor lady lying there. Can you imagine either of us is in any state to carry her? Besides, the police will have to be notified. She is dead. I can't feel any more for the dead. It's time I concentrated on the living. Only, I want to tell you this, MacDonald. You keep on calling me Campbell of Shawfield. Well, as it happens, my grandfather was a Jew. He came from Hamburg. And his name was Schoenfeld. He changed it to Shawfield. He thought it sounded prettier. We've never shouted Kruachen. Our war chant is, Oi vai, oi vai. Oh, all right, all right. Oh, stop dragging at me. This is the hotel in here. I want to go to bed. Leave me alone. I have every intention of leaving you alone. Ah, just one more thing. You are not to say a word of this to Kate. She'll know in the morning, soon enough. There's something I've got to do. But when I've finished, I'm going in to say good night to Kate. Any objection? Oh, have it your own way. What are you rummaging in Curtis's car for? Death. I suppose you think that makes sense. Where are you going? I'm going to see Mr. Curtis. What you want? I have two things to show you, Mr. Curtis. One, a 17th century pistol. And this. That's my surgical knife. Yes. I, I don't like lethal weapons. Why do you bring these horrid things into my room? Take them away at once. One is lethal no longer. Both barrels have been fired. Why did you have to kill Mrs. Stewart? I suppose you couldn't find her body in the snow. I wondered what you were looking for all the time. She was well buried. You wouldn't have found her till the thaw. But it's all up, you know. And what do you mean by that? Oh, for pity's sake, man, of course it's all up. The police will be here tomorrow. They have your description. Even if this hadn't happened, it would only have been a question of time. They got your scar wrong, sir, didn't they? I see it's on the pad of your thumb. Not on your wrist at all. I suppose the knife slipped. I don't care for these personal remarks. You talk as if nothing had happened. Even if I were prepared to connive at your escape, how on earth do you think you could get away? I fear you underestimate my intelligence. You haven't answered me. Why did you kill her? Why? Didn't you see it took away your last chance of escape? And of course I killed her. She knew about my scar. I couldn't possibly let her live. She was cycling down the road and I shot her. She was cruel. She let her cattle die of starvation. I've no patience with people who will use dumb animals. It's wicked, vile. We had such a lovely cat. She was called Ricky. After Kipling's mongoose, you know, he was the dearest little fellow. Don't you ever think of humans. Humans? Oh, humans. No, Mr. Shawfield. Why should I? They've never thought of me. Give me Huey any day. But he's only an animal. That's what Violet said. He was such a dear little fellow. He used to run and meet me when I came back from work. He talked to me, you know. I've always loved animals. I believe I told you that I trained to be a vet. Oh, of course. That's why you have a surgical knife. Why didn't you throw it away? It wasn't very clever of you to keep it in a car. I still keep my instruments. I wish you'd seen little Ricky. He understood everything I said. And she waited until my back was turned. And then had him destroyed. My lovely cat. Oh, she must have had her reasons. Reasons? What possible reasons could there be for such a dreadful thing? She said he was dirty. 
After all, he was an old gentleman, 15 years old. It wasn't his fault if he occasionally made a mistake. But she couldn't bear anything dirty in her home. She took him round to the vet while I was at work and had him put to sleep. So I killed her. I suppose you are going to repeat all this to the police. What else can I do? You litter the place with corpses like a battlefield. Mr. Curtis, I want you to tell me something. Pardon? You killed your wife. I don't know why you keep on asking me that. I've never attempted to deny it. Of course I did. I was very clever about it. All right, you were clever. But tell me this. Why do you always look over your shoulder? What on earth do you mean? Why are you always turning as if there's someone behind you? I, I, She's I, still there, isn't she, Lionel? Violet is always there. Maybe there's a jigsaw pattern across her, but she's still there. No! I'm sorry, dear. I won't keep you waiting long. I just have to speak to this gentleman. Oh, don't be angry, dear. I'm just coming. Mr. Curtis, you're not well. Oh, yes, I am. And I'm clever, too. I'm clever than you. They'll never catch someone as clever as me. You're not going to the police. I shall make my getaway as I always have. I suppose you're going to see Kate now. Yes. The only person I could bear to talk to. I don't really mind. I'm leaving here. I'm going back to teaching. That sounds about the most sensible thing I've ever heard you say. I can do my book in my spare time. Yeah, I expect you can. What's the matter with Curtis? I saw him tearing down the stairs just now, as if all the devils in hell were after him. I imagine they were. I'm not driving fast, dear. Yes, dear, I did signal I was going right. Of course, dear. Just as you say, dear. Well, after all, dear, we have to get away, don't we? Huey! Oh, look away! There's a good old chap! Huey! I can't stop you! What am I going to do? Huey! Huey! you might like to know I'm back. I'm not going out again. You needn't worry anymore, Kate. Oh. oh, my darling, my poor darling. You've been crying yourself sick. Oh, don't cry anymore. Go to sleep now. Oh, you look terribly white. What happened? Are you really not going back to Sylvia? Sylvia? Oh, she's in the past, Kate. She's nothing to do with me anymore. I should have had the sense to know it a long time ago. Oh, my dear darling, you're worth a dozen of her. And I'm sorry I frightened you so. Listen to me, Kate. The shadow of murder is gone. And we're alive. We're going to stay alive and be happy. And, oh, my darling, Kate, I love you very much. That was David March as John Shawfield, Rena Anderson as Mrs. Stewart, and Gudrun Yeo as Kate Stewart in Shadow of Murder by Charity Blackstock. With Eric Anderson as Curtis, Fraser Carr as MacDonald, Molly Rankin as Mrs. Forbes, Arthur Lawrence as the taxi driver. The production, which was recorded, was by Audrey Cameron.